Um, so my name is Fadwa Bro. I'm the president founder of the Moroccan Youth Climate Movement, but also a uh, member, um, national coordinator of the Arab Youth Climate Movement. Uh, Karima already said it all. So, um, well, basically, I'm, I'm not here to give you a lecture because I think uh, nowadays we have access to information on, uh, via technology. So it's uh, my presence today is to maybe to share our experience with you. And I think um, everyone here in the room is um, participating in this conference because uh, you have an objective to make a change within your communities and it's important maybe for us maybe in a couple of years we'll not be uh, young anymore so it's very important to transfer our experience where what was uh, good practices and things to avoid because what Karima said and I um, I was writing a lot of notes that you already say it means like you already uh, um, got the technical knowledge and uh, it's like climate change issues it's a very broad topic and it's, as again uh, Kaima mentioned, it's uh, affecting our daily life. So here as a climate activist, I'm not coming from scientific background or not, I, I, or I didn't graduate from um, a university uh, where I studied climate issues, but I decided to react to the climate impact on my uh, society and local community, um, uh, local communities. So it's, um, this is how the general idea of establishing a youth climate movement uh, came up back in 2011, uh, well 12, that was the effective launch of the Arab Youth Climate Movement after the Arab um, Revolution and this revolution was mainly uh, due to many reasons and one of these main reasons was the environmental degradation because we are one of the largest regions on the world and we have our most of our communities who are based on uh, rural areas. So their uh, incomes, their productions are mainly from agriculture incomes. So you have to understand how climate change is impacting all the social, economic um, livelihoods in, uh, in our daily life uh, as well. Um, I was um, invited to, to, int I mean, to speak in the panel regarding to energy. This is another big issue because uh, we are, um, as MENA countries, we depend largely on energy imports. And as population, uh, population um, uh, grows up, the needs also of energy patterns also grows. And I mean, the current uh, gov governmental energy policies we're not designed to cope with these difficulties, which means um, at a certain time we found out that we need to shift from the current energy policies to a new um, uh, scenarios, to new um, uh, whole like new whole policies, and uh, I I don't know that m most of you may already know that the, that was the, the the global climate deal, which is Paris Agreement, and this is the first um, maybe agreement in the history of humanity where all the countries over the planet uh, agreed to take action. It's not because they wanted to take action, because they were forced. Mm -hmm. Because the reaction of the, uh, the, 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 I mean, the, uh, the ecosystem urged like on the ground actions and immediate actions. So all, our, uh, all the countries presented what we called before the Paris um, conference, the intended nationally determined contributions, who are today the national determined contribution and if you want to get involved in climate talks you need to also get involved in this or maybe to to to, to have a look on what is uh, going on on the global decision making process because it's draws um, it's drawing like our future and you are concerned about the implementation of the decisions that were made in mm -hmm. Paris two years ago because they are mainly 
short I mean medium term mm -hmm. and long term decisions so you are the one and your children and your communities who are concerned about these decisions because it's not about environmental decisions at all those guys who are gathering every year they are discussing the whole economic mm -hmm. um, issues the whole industrial issues so it's about the economy it's about employment it's about changing the whole uh, system on the planet so none of us is not concerned as long as you are living on this planet as long as you are belonging to one of the regions that are the most affected by climate change and knowing that we are not global emitters at all so our contribution in the global emissions is extremely low but we are the ones who are uh, who are the Same most uh, like who are paying the price of the global development mm -hmm. and who need to adapt to the current climate circumstances <laughs> so why young people uh, again when the, the, the global agreement uh, was made in Paris two years ago there was many components within the agreements regarding to mitigation adaptation climate finance and all of these politics are only the global framework of action because the real policy the real change the, the real shifting is on the national level and more in depth in, at the local level because adaptation actions have to be implemented at the local level so but again there is a, I mean a very important um, discussion about how can we create the global debates, climate awareness, how can we get all the stakeholders involved, how everyone can play a key role in this transition on um, the, 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 the economic system, the energy system, etc. So this is why it was important for our region as again was one of the most impacted, impacted by climate change to uh, to enhance the role of young people, and you know already that we are in on the MENA population, it's mainly young people under the age of 35. So we are here talking about the biggest part of the MENA population, people who are concerned. But we have another challenge on the other side of the river, which is for many decades, the policy making uh, system uh, was built on some criteria, like very uh, classic criteria if you, if you want to be part of decision making process you have to first of all have a white hair like 50 years old and mm -hmm. above uh, because no one trusts that young people just like if you are young it means you're not capable of making change so to bring you to our uh, idea because again I'm here supposed to share with you what we are doing over the region it was important to create like unified regional climate movement to deal to deal with uh, or to cope with climate uh, difficulties but we already know that in every sub region we have some common and difference or there's something in every in every sub region we have we have like similarities all over the MENA region but we have also some national concerns that have to be addressed separately from the regional uh, level. So the idea of creating the Arab Youth Climate Movement is to create this generation-wide movement in order to, uh, to ensure this, this fair and just energy transition, climate awareness and climate education. And if you want, I mean, I've, I don't know if you already had a look on the Paris Agreement, there's one of the, uh, the, the, the I mean, the most interesting component of the agreement, which is uh, action for climate empowerment and this is mainly addressing uh, youth concerns with regards to climate issues so but when the movement was created at this time there was the, like the global communities was still advocating in order to uh, ensure the voice of young people in this uh, in this global transition in this global development and um, uh, at this time we we said okay we, we are already uh, aware of our limits uh, we are creating a new whole culture on the region which is young people 
have a voice to, to, to say, have a word to say. How can we make sure that decision makers, and as Karim has said, we can create this common ground of discussion and everyone can have a role uh, to play on, on these new policies. So we said, okay, first of all, what we, we need on the region. It was clear because, the, the, I mean, science is clear. Uh, uh, the reality is clear. It's like we need education, first of all. We need to raise awareness. And if you want to raise awareness, it's you have to, to address the, 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 the problematic with regards to each category's priorities. If I'm going to explain climate change impact to people on the rural areas, I'm not going to bring the, this international discourse to them because it's not it's not uh, this is not what, what they are concerned about they need to understand how this global climate change is impacting this their agricultural incomes mm -hmm. so it's about again security it's about law. so you have to address your 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 discourse uh, to each category's concerns and priorities. Young people, women, children, decision makers, but at the same time you have to be aware that you are delivering a message. You are creating a new culture of awareness of action, on the ground action. And when I was reading your program, I noticed that you are uh, like focusing on advocacy. I think advocacy is, you know, are taking things on the whole another level, which is very important. Advocacy means you want to propose alternative politics. You want to propose on-the-ground solutions, solutions that can be implemented, efficient, and sustainable. So if you want to take the step toward advocacy, you have to keep in mind that you need to adopt the bottom-up approach. It's not only like every social cause, climate change, environment, gender, anything. It's not about politics, it's not only, I'm saying, it's about getting involved those who are concerned, those who are the most impacted. So you don't have to adopt the same approach that we claim has to end, which is this very strategic talk, think tanks, and being on the international things, there are populations behind if you want to make the change that you need to get them involved. You need to take their concerns to the table of decision makers. And this is how you can play a key role in changing the systems. So that's my first advice. So this is um, just between bracket in order to bring you back to, to, the, to, to, our, uh, to the launch of the Arab Youth Climate Movement. We said, okay, as young people coming from different backgrounds as you are today, uh, what can we do? Because we are aware that climate change is not about the environmental degradation of our economy, it's about security. Yes, yeah, she wrote, it's time to open discussion, it means I have to stop. Uh, hi, thanks again. Uh, my question is to you, Ms. Fedwa. Um, you were talking about the youth, or the role and everything. Uh, if we are just addressing the decision makers, uh, for instance, in, I'm from Lebanon, so when we went, we talked to the minister and everything, we gave him a proposal, nothing happened. Don't you think it's more about taking, starting to take action rather than addressing? Just a question. And um, about the INDCs, like um, we're on limited time, and this is something that the government has to be doing, reducing it from 15 to 30 percent, as it's in our case in Lebanon. But uh, so far, I don't see any action that's being done. Uh, what can we do about that? Thank you. Yes, sure. Well, first of all, I apologize from the audience for not sharing with you what I was supposed to share with you, but I can respect some um, some um, internal procedures. And regarding to your question for the INDCs, who are today the indices, which, me, which means um, now we are we're talking about real uh, national policies that have to be implemented. Uh, I mean, the, after um, presenting the indices, that was there was another like discussion and negotiations that were launched in order to discuss how can we uh, implement this intended politics, which costs and who's gonna pay what. So now the whole you have just uh, my my advice to you, maybe given my experience in cops and several several years uh, years now, is like the cops is not where on the ground actions happen. The COPS is like intergovernmental um, 
benefits and interests are discussed, which comes to economy and industry. But if you want to be social change maker, you means you have to uh, be um, on the ground focused in terms of your actions and to get the victim of environmental degradation and climate change impacts involved in your discussion because if you want to be this linkage between policy making and the victims you have to understand the interest of the victims and the, uh, the appropriate actions that have to be uh, uh, implemented and also how they can get integrated in the national politics. So there is not everyone even in the po international uh, policy making um, now Everybody, everybody is aware that we need to think globally but act locally because uh, climate related issues cannot be addressed at all with these international negotiations. I mean, the international negotiations is only the framework. I mean, what everyone has to do on uh, the national or maybe on its level. But the most important thing, how the underground change has to uh, be operated. So, for to, to uh, to, to get back to your question, uh, the, I mean the indices in general are medium term and long term visions, which means they are not immediately um, implemented, but the public awareness, public education, um, new technology shifting, etc. are immediate actions and that, uh, that are involving already academia, uh, uh, local populations because they are concerned about adaptation mechanisms and concerns so they need to understand how to make this adaptation mechanism working on the ground in order to solve off all this um, agriculture uh, productions incomes energy needs uh, uh, etc so but you have also to be aware of this policy making process because this is after all uh, and as Karima said if the policy making uh, body is not involved with you, your action will be very intimidated and very, very um, like impactless, if I can say that. But on the other hand, for the advocacy process, you need to understand, first of all, what is the problem, to be aware of the current policies and also the alternative you are proposing, how sustainable are they, how on the ground and concrete and efficient are they and also to work on unified movements. Uh, one of the things that really making the advocacy process in civil society actors really weak is like everyone is trying to be the hero of the change. While changing is not about being the hero, it's about collaborating finding common ground. So, and my advice for young people in order to not repeat in the history, don't try to be someone who's the hero of the action. Just be someone who's working in collaboration with all the stakeholders, with civil society. If you are debaters, you want, as a debaters, you are addressing different issues within your organization, but you are concerned about, you feel that you want to do something about climate change environment. There are plenty networks over the region in your country is already working try to share experience try to find common ground of actions because what's gonna make your voice heard is the power of your movement is the power of your advocacy how many people are supporting how many local communities how many concerned communities were involved were touched and the impact was visible so my uh, message to end my remarks and to, to apologize for taking a lot is try first of all to map what is happening already on the ground in terms of politics, in terms of civil society actions and local communities actions. Again, climate uh, actions are about the local communities. So go on the ground and not for, not like don't stay focusing all only on the global talks. It's fancy. It's nice, a lot of food, a lot of like traveling on the airplane, it's really nice. But you're not doing anything to change what is happening. So if you are really to get involved and to value your time and your effort, you need to understand what is happening on the ground. And in Lebanon, maybe the priority of um, local communities are not the same for Tunisia, for we have some common or regional uh, policies that need to be taken because we have a geopolitical interest, we are sharing rivers, we are sharing uh, oceans, we are sharing, we have some 
shared, um, uh, I mean, shared resources. But it doesn't mean that that priority, underground priorities are the same. So try, first of all, to understand. If you want to advocate, understand, first of all, what is happening in terms of the um, national and international politics. How your country depends on the regional policies, on the international policies. Because if you want to change the perception of young power toward, I mean, uh, with the policy makers, we need to... Because it's happened already to some of uh, some of us. You got. I mean, you want to create the dialogue. They give you the voice, and then you start. We want this. We want this. And the answer. We have already all this politics, but you didn't understand the difference between politics and implemented politics.